All right, so my brother got me this chest, this rune-inscribed treasure chest for, for Christmas this year. And uh, as you can see, it's got runes all the way around the outside and arrows and stuff. And uh, so this is a movie about decoding this thing and figuring out what the combination is for the lock. So it's uh, you get a good look at it there. There we go. And that's the whole thing with something on the bottom. It's all uh, it's all just blank down there. And uh, so the first thing I did was work on getting the the runes figured out. And uh, that turns out to be pretty straightforward English cipher. So it's a uh, scripture from Revelation. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. A uh, verse that we're both familiar with from our studies of the scriptures, but below it is Revelation uh, 8, 12. Uh, and Revelation 8, 12 is not this verse. This verse is from the beginning of the scriptures where it's talking about the um, the rewards for those who are who overcome uh, the challenges that face the, the followers of Jesus in the last times. And uh, so this is from the first three chapters, I think, or maybe four chapters. So eight is far too, too far on. So this is not the reference for this scripture verse, which is very interesting. So if you do look up Revelation uh, 8, 12, it is, it reads, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So the third part of them was dark, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So a lot of stuff about thirds and things. Um, so there's a, some sort of clue about thirds, there's some sort of clue about the throne, there's a reference thing where the references are different, and then there's all these arrows, of course, all this arrow stuff. And what do we make of all these arrows? So. Uh, I was puzzling over this. Um, I tried a number of things, and, and actually, I just stumbled upon the um, the solution by accident. So I, I tried uh, using the arrows to follow and like work through here to see if like it would spell out anything, um, and I didn't get anywhere with that. And I also noticed that the these aren't on a perfect grid, so I figured, eh, maybe that's not the actual intention. Um, I worked on. Uh, figuring out, like, doing a third thing, so I, I did all of these, and, like, skipping every third arrow, and using the arrows, because I noticed that there are three lines here, and there are three, uh, three tumblers in the, in the lock, so it's like, okay, well, each one of these rows corresponds to one of the three tumblers, uh, one of the three tumblers here. So, uh, I worked on figuring out, well, maybe a third, like, skip every third one, or only read every third arrow, and, like, follow them, are we following them on here, or are we just following them on the tumblers? So it's like, is this saying, when this goes down, does it mean to go down one of the tumblers down? Or does it mean to go down one on the chart of arrows? Like, down one row here, and like follow a different row? So I, I charted them out this way, where they're, as they're written, I charted them out this way as they're presented, because there's a gap on the back here. You see, it's like, these gaps in the lines. And, uh, I figured, well, maybe these gaps are, like, maybe this is the start of this row, so that it, and then this is the start of this row. And uh, so I lined them back up and tried following them that way, so that maybe you have to line them all up from the beginning, and then the arrows make sense. So none of that was helping. None of it got me a combination that would open the lock. And uh, I was trying this stuff with thirds for a long time. I have all these little charts of, like, different combinations of stride and starting position for the, you know, skipping a third or skipping two thirds or whatever. And uh, so then desperation, I was just like, well, let's just count the number of arrows, because I was thinking, okay, the arrow means, like, turn this tumbler one, one notch, each arrow. And then up and down, I don't know what they are. But I figured, all right, well, let's just, let's just figure out, like, how many of these are there? So there's 16 on the first row, 19 on the second row, and 14 on the second row. Or the third row, 14 on the third row. And I figured, okay, well, if, uh, if these are tumbler things, then... Uh, and there's 10 positions on this, then we can just cut that down to 6, 9, 4, because, you know, we'll just try that. And so I tried 6, 9, 4, didn't work. So then I was like, oh, how about if I invert them, because maybe these are saying to turn it, like, one to the right, instead of adding one. You know, it could be add, it could be turning the back section to the right, because they're closer to the, anyway, 
it, it's not clear which direction you're supposed to be turning the tumbler. So I was like, all right, well, I'll just invert these, uh, take the tens complement, and then we'll get, uh, you know, four, one, and six. And so I was on my way. So I was like, all right, well, one, two, three, four, and one, that's easy. Uh, and then six, I'll go back here. And then it just popped open on seven. And so I actually stumbled across the combination by accident, just by testing a dumb theory about the arrows that didn't even, like, it didn't incorporate the ups and down arrows at all. It was just, like, this dumb thing that I tried. Uh, so then I called up Kevin, I was like, hey, Kevin, like, what's going on with this thing? Like, I, I stumbled across this thing, I know I didn't get it the right way, because I didn't get the right numbers. I just stumbled across it, uh, by accident. And, uh, so he explained that, in his intention, there, oh, so, and you notice that there's, like, this word thrown on the side here, uh, on both of them. So, like, this throne appears twice in the inscription, then once on either side, and so that's four thrones, and so that was the first number, the four is the four thrones, and it shows up at the beginning, the fourth angel. So there's there's two fours at the beginning, or something, and so that was the idea of the, the four. Uh, and then I was like, okay, well, from there, it seems like Revelation 3.21, maybe that was the, the reference, right? Like, this is actually 3.21. And so if you take a third of three, you get one. And if you take a third of 21, you get seven. And and he's like, well, that's half right, but that's not it either. And I was like, what? No, why? And so it turns out that he didn't mean for this, like for three to come out to one. Like it just, that just happened that way. Um, and the, the one in this combination you're supposed to get by doing the arrow thing. So it actually was, you actually did have to do with the runes. And so you follow the arrows and you go over a three and four and a down. And if you do it properly, and I was I was doing it a little bit differently than he had intended, but uh, if you do it with the with the first arrow being landing on the first one instead of the first arrow starting on the first one and moving over one character, one rune, then you end up with landing on the runes over here that spell out O N E, uh, which is one. And so that was the that was a clue, like all these arrows were to get you the clue from the runes here that spell out one. So I, I followed a number of uh, false trails there and didn't really didn't really do it the right way, but it was a fun puzzle anyway and I enjoyed parsing it out and, and playing with the, the numbers and playing with the arrows and things. So thank you, Kevin, and uh, it got me to be familiar enough with runes that I wrote my notes in runes as well. So I hope that was... I hope that was... Uh, Worth it for you, it was certainly worth it for me. But I haven't actually opened this up yet, so let's open this up and see what's inside. I've unlocked it, but I uh, I never actually opened it, so we're gonna open on camera here. We're on camera, we're on camera, here we are. So this comes open like this, and inside it's gotta be coins of some kind. Oh my goodness! It's gotta be 20 bucks in coins! Look at that! Wow! So shiny! Alright, well there we go. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, for the fantastic birthday or Christmas present, and uh, and for making this whole thing and the runes and stuff. And uh, I love it. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas.